In the know with AD North Commander Colonel Tom Magnus. Hey everyone, uh, Colonel Magnus here, and uh, we're in uh, Gardez. We're at the uh, ANA installation, uh, and, and we're actually physically located right now inside of the power plant. Uh, you can't have a sustainable uh, Afghan army installation if you don't have utilities. You got to have water, wastewater, and electricity. And as we finish construction, and we turn this uh, over to the next phase, uh, it becomes an operations and maintenance uh, drill to keep all of these things uh, running. Uh, Aaron Troop is in our O&M division. Uh, Aaron, uh, you're from uh, Bonneville Dam in, uh, uh, where do you live uh, back in the States? I live in Carson, Washington. In Carson, Washington. And, uh, and what do you do there at the dam? I'm a power plant mechanic for about 10 years now. So you're all over this stuff, right? Uh, how, how many uh, 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 gigawatts is this thing uh, cranking out? To? Six megawatts here. Do you know how many gigawatts it took for uh, uh, Michael J. Fox to go back to the future? I don't remember. <laughs> it's 98 million gigawatts. Uh, and how many uh, did you say this plant is pro is producing? Six megawatts. Now put that in perspective to what uh, is at Bonneville. Uh, wh how much does that produce? I'm pretty sure each unit uh, produces 100 megawatts. 100 megawatts. So, uh, but this is enough certainly for this installation. And then um, there's a plan for growth. We're going to bring in um, even more units. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is. And, and what are we talking? How many more units do you think you'll need for all the things we're building here? Well, they're talking about putting in four more generators. Okay. And the base is actually going to double in size in the next couple of years in terms of land area. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, there's, you know, four or five thousand here now. Uh, it's going to double in size not only in land area, as you said, but I think also in people, which means the demand on our utilities and ultimately the demand on you for operations and maintenance is going to double as well. I mean, that's a big challenge. I mean, what do, what do you see as the requirement for O&M here in the future? Uh, they're probably they're planning on adding an extra guy here to help out because we also cover uh, 29 a and P sites in five provinces around here. Oh my gosh, so, and I don't know how you're going to do that, even with two guys. Uh, that just seems like an incredible, uh, incredible task. Uh, well, you know, as we go from construction to O&M, uh, really you guys are the main effort. And uh, the most important thing that we are thinking about is how to turn all of this over to the Afghans, where ultimately we want to work you out of a job. So, you know, what, what do you think it's going to take in order for the Afghans to take over your responsibilities uh, here? Uh, we're working on that right now, sir. There's a lot of mentoring going on and uh, training and just trying to get skilled, churn our local nationals into skilled uh, tradesmen and so that they'll be able to perpetuate what we've done here into the future. Absolutely. I mean, if we're spending as much as we are on this kind of infrastructure, it needs to be sustainable. And we got to make sure the Afghans, who frankly did not, for, most, for the most part, they didn't grow up with electricity and water. No, not many of them. They kind of, a lot of the ANA is, comes from the countryside. Absolutely. So uh, we're giving them this stuff, but uh, you know, I think the taxpayers are counting on us to make sure that it is sustainable, that they're going to be able to continue the mission when you leave. And so um, that's a big burden on you to not only you know, manage an O&M contractor, but every day be thinking about you've got to work yourself out of a job. You've got to get an Afghan to do what you do. Yeah, and thankfully a lot of the Afghans, they're eager to learn, you know. If you get them one-on-one, -on -one, they really, they want to learn and they're, they're excited about uh, everything we've got going on here. Yeah, well that's awesome. Well, Aaron, I was looking at this, you know, I know you won't like it when I mess around, but what happens if I do this? Is this, is this, is this gonna, is that bad? Well, oh my gosh, look at these lights are blinking. What, what did I just do? I don't know, I mean, uh, do you think we're okay? I think we're going to be okay, but you need to step back, sir. <laughs> well, look, uh, you're doing a great job here. Uh, uh, I've, I've counseled you on many of an occasion about uh, cutting your hair. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, of course, you know I say that out of pure jealousy. <laughs> uh, 
uh, but you are doing a great, uh, great job here. I'm real proud of you. And uh, and truly, the O and M part of our business is is uh, increasingly becoming the main effort as we go from construction to uh, operations and maintenance. So keep up the good work and work yourself out of a job. Would you do that? Yes. And to everyone watching on TV, we got some great people here in O and M, and we've invested so much in these projects. We've got to make sure that we turn it over into capable hands of these Afghans and uh, and people like Aaron and those that are watching on TV, you all are going to make that the case. So uh, thanks for what you all do.